Hey YouTube, in this video I wanted to do a kind of a content piece talking about core parking uh, in Windows because I've been reading a lot of things on the recent video that I did for the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D a PC build video that we did. Uh, I live streamed with this CPU uh, recently. Anybody who's doing like live streaming, uh, this CPU is probably the best one. Uh, available um, because you get the best of both worlds you get the best in class gaming performance you get the efficiency king this thing like sips power while live streaming it's insane in, in terms of how efficient this thing is um, and then you also get you know productivity you don't sacrifice too much on productivity I will be doing a video comparing how this compares against the standard 7950X in DaVinci Resolve, so stay tuned for that. We will also pair it up against the i9 for productivity as well to see how it competes in against uh, Intel's flagship CPU. Um, but what I wanted to do today was kind of look at core parking on various high core count CPUs. So 16 core, 32 thread, and then we have the 8P core plus 16E core um, 32 thread from Intel. So we're going to look at core parking because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding of what core parking is. So core parking is a power saving feature. It has nothing to do with the dual CCDs. It has nothing to do with the E cores and the P cores. So just to kind of show how it works, you guys will notice I have Genshin Impact uh, up and running here on this PC. I've got Task Manager open. Um, you can see, so I've got a dual monitor set up here. So we have a 1440p monitor on the left hand side, we have a 4K monitor on the right hand side, so the game is running in windowed mode so you guys can see it without it being like gigantic. Um, and then we've got Task Manager open, then I have the Windows Resource Monitor open to look at the cores that are parked. So I have a game running and we are looking at a Intel 13900K, um, just to kind of show that here, if we zoom in you can see. 13th gen Intel Core i9 1300K and you can see Genshin Impact is most likely running on these two cores that are almost fully maxed out right there and then we have uh, what is this core 0 we have 8 10 but look if I mouse over it's saying CPU 9 is parked CPU 1 is parked this one is parked 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 all these cores, so down here are the E cores. So the E cores are not parked. They're currently doing stuff because if you mouse over them, they're not parked. Now these P cores, most of them are literally doing nothing. So they're just sitting there. And some of these are the hyper threads. Um, so they're all kind of parked. So, but these CPU 8 and 10 are basically running the game. And I guess CPU 0 and, well, 2 is, 2 is coming in and out of park. You can see it keeps going parked and then unparked, parked, and then unparked. So now let's look at the resource manager to kind of see the full picture here. So up at the top, we have the, the total utilization. And this is over a 60 second average. Uh, and then you have the service CPU usage. And then now we have the first CPU core. So that's the one that we were looking at over here that one looks like it's somewhere between 40 and 50 percent load on average if we scroll down CPU 2 is going in and out of part so this is what I was saying earlier in the live stream when we were using the 7950X3D when you need when the operating system in this case Windows 10 needs a thread to be allocated for work for some sort of background task or application process or whatever it is and if it needs to utilize a core that's parked it will wake it up and it will assign work to it that's what you guys see what's happening here on CPU 2 and then if we go down CPU 3 parked 4 parked 5 parked now I see 4 did have some stuff um, activity on there being assigned to it but it, it you know oftentimes it's not really having to do anything so you can see right here as we go down the list a lot of these cores are just parked now we come to the first one where the game is constantly running so this one's you know pretty much pegged at hundred percent 
which isn't necessarily a good thing. I, I would really think that ideally um, you'd want to divvy up this work a little bit more. Um, but that tells me that this game, Genshin Impact, is very highly single-threaded, or it doesn't really scale beyond that many threads. You can see CPU 8 is doing the bulk of the work, and then 9 is just kind of there doing nothing. 9 could actually be a hyper-thread of, of that core, though. And then 10 is also fully loaded, and then 11 is parked, and then as we go down the list, it's just a bunch of the same story, until you get to the first E-Core. So here we are at the first E-Core, because the 15 is the last hyperthread of the 8th core, of the 8th performance core. So now, 16 all the way down, you can see none of these E-Cores are parked, so they're all just kind of like sitting there doing menial tasks, whatever, in the background. So that's kind of how that works, and this is on Windows 10, I will add, this is not Windows 11, um, but I assume that the, the functionality is going to be the same. So now let's go ahead and look at the AMD processor with Genshin Impact and see if the behavior is any different. Okay, so now we're going to look at the 7950X 3D CPU to understand how it works, but we're going to see it's very, very similar. So. Just like with the other setup, now I have Genshin Impact running over here. We have a dual monitor setup, so I can move you know, this guy over here if I wanted, for example. If we look at the second CCD cores, they are getting parked because they don't really need to be doing anything. Um, there's not a lot going on, so you're saving on power. But you'll notice, like core 18, 19, these guys were awake. They were doing work, but now they're not having anything to do. So they're asleep. And if we go back up to the other CCD, so the one with the V-cache, we can see the game running. If I bring up Game Bar, just to kind of show that, you can see right there in the middle, it recognizes that Genshin Impact is a game. So there's no reason. It's automatically prioritizing the V-cache cores. Um, if I was running an application that was not known or not, not uh, in the Game Bar list, you would have the option to select it to say, remember that this is a game. But in this case, Genshin Impact is already a known entity, so it's always being assigned the right cores. Uh, and if we want to go look at the diagnostic info here, you can see the KGL version loaded and service version are the same. They're the latest ones. The last update was March 1st of this year. And what you'll notice here with just the game running by itself just like with the Intel CPU, the game is only really using two cores for threads. And you can see that there. And then any sort of like background task is getting assigned to these other cores that you can see over here on the primary CCD. And on the secondary one, you can see occasionally these guys are getting woken up. Um, but then they're going back to sleep because there's nothing to do. So why is this a good thing? This is a good thing because they don't need to be doing any work. So there's no reason for them to be wasting electricity the whole time. The whole purpose of the core parking is a power saving feature in Windows. You can see the same kind of behavior. So the game is running on these four threads. As I scroll down, you'll notice that there's cores that are doing background activity here and here. Um, and then as we go further down, once we hit the point now where CPU 16 is the first core on the second CCD, so the one without the V-cache, you can see this one has nothing to do, so it's asleep and like all these other ones are asleep, which is a good thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open OBS to see what happens when you open that pr program. And you'll see immediately all these cores are waking up. So immediately all these cores are now doing stuff. So OBS is running on the second CCD. You can see just kind of right here. I can show it over there. So the point is in conclusion, like when you have high core count CPUs, like 16 core 32 thread or dual CCD or a big and little uh, heterogeneous architecture design, there isn't really a problem because you actually want energy efficiency when you have such a high core count density and you don't really have that much stuff going on in the background. So I hope you guys found this video useful uh, and leave a comment below if you have a question on like any anything you want to see me test potentially. If I can do it, I'll try uh, if it's in my ability to do that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.